Hey folks, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the iClicker 2 and the iClicker ecosystem. This is an audience response uh, tool that was first pioneered by physicists at the University of Illinois back in 2005 and has since grown into a very popular uh, set and also a tool that many professors and colleges across the world use as a way to get a reflection of how students are learning, also used by business professionals perhaps after some kind of presentation or a meeting, and you can also use it to create more complex entries, for instance, uh, numbers and text, uh, if you're doing, let's say, a quick uh, quiz or a survey. Uh, regardless, the iClicker 2, like most of these uh, survey, survey or audience response-based uh, ecosystems, are still a little bit on the expensive side of the spectrum, especially for many students, uh, because they we might use it for one class and then have to get rid of it, sell it, uh, because other classes may not require it, and it's something entirely up to the discretion of the professor or the course. Uh, however, each of these individual clickers may cost up to 60 bucks, depending on where you find it online or through the company's website, and a receiver, which the professor needs to purchase and plug into a computer, it works with both Mac and PC, to collect data from each of the clickers. As far as the accuracy goes, it actually is quite good in terms of reception. Um, it doesn't really seem to lose data or lose uh, someone's response at all, even in a massive auditorium or in a room, there really isn't that issue, so uh, that is an area where the company worked on to make sure that uh, the iClicker 2 is up to par. Uh, otherwise, getting a whole classroom set can be a little bit costly, uh, which, is when, which is why there are a few different iterations that we'll discuss. There's the iClicker, which is a version that is the most basic, doesn't feature any uh, text entry in the form of any letters, there's only or any numbers, basically there's only A, B, C, D, or E, and there also isn't a monochromatic black and white screen on the very top. So that's just going to be for multiple choice, uh, just maybe for some quick quizzes or surveys. Uh, the iClicker 2, the one you see in front of you, is the more popular version, slightly more expensive, that offers a few more additional features from uh, input's perspective, and also comes with a service that the company has rolled out that allows you to connect uh, the unit with a smartphone, iOS or Android, and allow you to use your phone as the remote to answer uh, ABCD or text in a certain response. Uh, of course, that's again up to the discretion of the person giving a, a meeting or giving a class lecture just because, uh, again, phones themselves can prove to be a distraction. So before launching into a bit more about the performance as well as uh, the entire story, we're going to check out the design of the iClicker 2. So for 60 bucks, you are basically getting a plastic slab, which I feel like is a little bit on the cheap side of the spectrum from a construction quality perspective. Definitely not as uh, well constructed as a Texas Instruments calculator, for instance. There isn't too much rubber accents. Everything kind of creaks and cringes at the sides. Uh, the plastic seems to open up quite easily. So that's an area where the company could improve on. But the front here features the black and white screen. There isn't a backlight, so uh, you should probably be in a bright lit environment if you want to read uh, whatever content is displayed uh, over here. But down below here, there's access to relatively tactile controls for deleting something. So maybe be one letter at a time if you are inputting text. There's also a refresh button to uh, make sure that you're back into the text entry mode after you've answered and submitted a question. There's also four-way navigation toggles for going back and forth between the menus, uh, also for the letters for text entry. There's a send key for inputting, uh, sending in your answer, a power switch, which you can tap on for a few seconds to get into the menu, and there's also the dedicated controls for the A, B, C, D, and E. There's a few channels which the iClicker operates on, and you can change that depending on uh, the receiver unit, so depending on the frequency, uh, that allows you to get a, perhaps a better effect in a larger environment or a room without uh, interference from overall radios that might be nearby. Below here you have access to a lanyard strap. There's also the addition of a battery compartment. It takes four AAA batteries which are not included. There's also a, a bit of instructions printed on the back that tells you how to send in the multiple choice all numeric, all of numeric text, and also the battery status information, and also how to register the remote online through a tool uh, produced by the company. There's a few rubber feet which prevents the eye clicker from sliding around when you place on a surface or onto a desk. So overall, that's the design and the uh, overall impressions of the hardware. So a quick look at what the current website looks like from the company, so you can visit, visit them directly. Uh, it's actually something that might be required depending on, let's say, if you're using this in a class, just because the first time that you purchase an iClicker, you need to first register it. There's a unique code or identification code printed on the back of the battery compartment. It's also going to pop up the first time that you power it on, and that is a code that you need to, to enter into the web app uh, to then 
input your name so it signs that code to your name to your student ID uh, or perhaps an employee ID so on and so forth so that whenever you click in a response the receiver will automatically remember that software and then the web app pushes that information to whatever course uh, or the owner of the receiver the person giving the meeting or the lecture um, otherwise this is a bit more information about how the company started again it talks about uh, when this really was released, uh, the prototype units were, were built in 1997. 2005 is when this was commercially available. And again, this is what the receiver unit looks like. Also has a small LCD display, and there's an antenna to improve that reception quality. Here is the aforementioned iClicker 1 without a display, iClicker 2, and the included Reef software, which can be compatible with a phone. I will say, though, that the Reef rolling software uh, is, is, looks to be separately developed as well by another team, has a subscription service cost to it. If you purchase an iClicker, or two, it includes a, a 30 day trial, but afterwards you need to pay a monthly fee to use that functionality. So that's something to consider, and uh, perhaps we don't exactly recommend that. Perhaps going for just the iClicker or going for that Reef Surface uh, service is the direction to go instead of opting for both. So, otherwise, we're going to now go into a quick demo of, uh, put, of turning the unit on and showing you guys how to uh, quickly access some of these settings. When we power this thing first on, it actually displays your unique uh, user ID code down below and for a few seconds and then later goes away. There's also the battery status on the top right hand corner. And what that unique code is, is your identification code. So if you log in online through the, the iClicker website, it allows you to enroll into a class by entering your ID and then going through and entering your name and so on and so forth. So your instructor receives your information and knows you know, who is answering the questions. Um, afterwards, it also told the AA, that's actually the band, so it has a certain amount of channels that you can go through. So perhaps uh, one instructor might think, you know, the channel AA, if they're in a room that's also shared by another professor, uh, it's going to be too busy, they can change to something like AB. So that's something that you can verify with your teacher and it's uh, pretty easy to, to switch and to change out. There are also instructions for that located on the back and behind the back cover. Otherwise, as far as the battery goes, it, it does last for a fair amount of time just because it's using just a monochrome screen with no backlight. So under darker environments, it becomes a bit of a challenge to see, but it drains very little power. Power, and it still works pretty well. So afterwards, you can pretty easily text out anything such as a letter. Right now, there's no base being detected, meaning that we don't have a receiver nearby in our vicinity, which is why you know we can't actually send this answer in. But if we could, we just you know write the send key, tap on that once to input our answer, and we can still send it again if we want to just confirm it. When we're done, just tap on the reset key on the side, and that clears things out. Other things you can do, uh, other than tapping the A, B, C, D, or E select keys for you know multiple choice keys, I can also use the arrow keys up, down, left, and right to tap out certain letters if I'm writing out a, a longer response, maybe a short word, or also um, a number is also possible in a math class. But that takes a little bit more time to just get used to. So those are some of the basic things that you can do as far as uh, powering it on. Uh, when you're done, just tap on the power key for a few seconds and it goes back off. So anyways, this has been a quick video first look and a quick review of the iClicker 2 and a, a brief explanation of the iClicker ecosystem. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. You can check out more details in our official written article.